suppose we have an angle, this black angle right here. We're gonna call two lines isogonal conjugates with respect to this angle if the two lines pass through this point and if this angle equals this angle. And respectively, you can see this is equivalent to this angle equals this angle. So in this case, the two blue lines, this line and this line, are isogonal conjugates with respect to this angle. Note that the two isogonal conjugate lines may lie outside of the angle and still be called isogonal conjugates, as long as this angle equals this angle. Also note that two lines that are isogonal conjugates with respect to an angle are symmetric with respect to the angle bisector of that angle, because this angle equals this angle. Furthermore, if we have a triangle and we have two lines that pass through one of the vertices of the triangle and are such that this angle equals this angle, then we call these two lines isogonal conjugate lines in the triangle with respect to this vertex. In this video, we're going to show that if we have a triangle and this is its altitude and this is the segment that connects this vertex of the triangle and its circumcenter, then this line and this line are isogonal conjugate lines in the triangle with respect to this vertex. In other words, we're going to prove that this angle equals this angle. Let this angle be alpha. Since this is a circumcenter, we know that this angle here is twice as much, so 2 times alpha. And we also know that this segment equals this segment because this is a radius of the circle and this is also a radius of the circle. And therefore, this triangle is isosceles, which means that this angle equals this angle equals 90 minus alpha. Also, from the sum of the angles in this triangle, we have that if this angle is alpha and this is 90, then this is 90 minus alpha. And therefore, this angle equals this angle, which means that this line and this line are isogonal conjugates in this triangle. Here's how the same statement looks like for alpha greater than 90 degrees. In this case, this is our triangle, this is the altitude, and this is the segment that connects this vertex and the circumcenter of the triangle. Then we need to prove that this angle equals this angle, in which case this altitude and this line would be isogonal conjugate lines with respect to this vertex of the triangle. If this angle is alpha, then this angle here is 180 minus alpha, and from the sum of the angles in this triangle, we get that this angle is alpha minus 90 degrees. Furthermore, if this angle is alpha, you can see that it points towards this arc of the circle, and so it corresponds to this central angle in the circle, which is twice as much. So if this angle is alpha, then this angle is 2 times alpha which means that this angle is 360 minus 2 alpha, and now since this here is an isosceles triangle, since this is a radius and this is a radius, we get that this angle equals this angle equals alpha minus 90 degrees. And so this angle equals this angle, which proves that this and this are isogonal conjugate lines. Here's the optional problem. We have a triangle, and two of the altitudes in the triangle are dropped, and that's how we get this triangle here with the red vertices, and then we take this triangle, and take its circumcenter, its circumcenter is this point, and we need to prove that this line formed by this point and this point is perpendicular to this base of the triangle. So we need to prove that this angle is 90 degrees. And here's the solution. First of all, let's take this point here to be the circumcenter of the large triangle. Then let's notice that this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is 90 degrees. And so this quadrilateral here is cyclic. For cyclic quadrilaterals, we know that if this angle is alpha, then this angle is 180 minus alpha. Then the complementary one, this one, should be alpha. And hence, the small triangle here and the large triangle here are similar triangles. They have the same angles. They have the same angle gamma here, the same angle alpha here, and the remaining angle is also equal. So these two lines are corresponding lines in the triangles because this is the corresponding vertex for, for both triangles, it's where the angle gamma is located, and this is the circumcenter of one and this is the circumcenter of the other, so this line corresponds to this line. And corresponding elements in similar triangles means equal angles, of course. And so this angle here, its corresponding angle will be this one. So these two will be the same angle. And so this line that connects this vertex to this circumcenter is actually isogonal to this line. But we know that this line is isogonal to the altitude in the triangle, because that's what we've learned today. And so this and the altitude share the same angle on this side. And so this line and the altitude are actually the same line. So this line should be the altitude, so this should be a right angle. Another thing to notice is that the third altitude in the triangle actually passes through this point here, 
the intersection of the other two altitudes, which we're gonna see why in a later video. But from here, you can reason why, because this is a cyclic quadrilateral here. See, we have a right angle here and right angle here. So this point actually lies on the circle. And in this right angle triangle, we know that the circumcenter always lies on the hypotenuse, and it's the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And so this point actually lies on the line that connects this point and this point. And so this point also lies on the same altitude, so the three altitudes must intersect at one point. But that will be also a subject of a later video.